And I said, you want me to play Jesus, don't you? And he looked at me, he was smoking a cigarette, and he just, <sighs> yeah, put his head down. <laughs> it does not mean that I will not play the devil in a movie, but I, the difference is I don't go to the devil to ask him how to play him, I go to God. Every film has a something in it, that it a, a power. And then you go, okay, what's necessary, what's not necessary? Um, that does not mean that I will not play the devil in a movie, but I, the difference is I don't go to the devil to ask him how to play him. I go to God to teach me how to play this. Because when I do, it should unearth you. Um, there was a film I did with Denzel Washington, Deja Vu, and that had a lot to do with it. And so I got to write my monologue and piece in there with uh, Denzel. Tony Scott and Jerry Bruckheimer allowed me to do it. But I looked at a lot of the, um, along the way, I've always got to work with really good agents, ATF, FBI, CIA, and, and I write notes down. And then I bring that back into the script. And when I got to watch some of the, um, the, the, the interrogations that I got to see, you always hear another voice coming out of these guys like the devil speaking right through them and, and talking about their destiny, their, 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 their making their maker, their time. And, and, and I just would write a lot of that down and, and I would pray deeply ab about it and going into the scene because it, um, when an individual watches the movie, you, um, fi watching film, time suspends itself. You know, if I said you're gonna sit in this room in that chair for two hours, but if you do, if the actors play it right, you're so entranced into the film that you, time just goes by like that. And so um, I'm still that 14, 15 year old kid that watches a movie and in my mindset say, what would I? What would keep me on the edge of my seat? What would keep me entranced into this um, character? And the Passion of the Christ was very brutal, um, especially when we went to the Cat of Nine Tails. Again, where I'm working with the best people in the world that are revealing to me, this is really what happened. So when we were looking at like the Shroud of Turin, you can see the the. Um, uh, the Shroud of Turn is a, a image of Jesus. And when you start going into the uh, track lines on his body, you can see the bamboo sticks the Romans would have used on him. But then you all see the, see the def, deep ones where it looks like the Grand Canyon in your skin. And they like, I remember Keith Vanderland saying, people will go into shock now when they see this. It, I mean, this, this is a cat of nine tails, this is horrific. And he said, I'll take him to the edge. So it was very brutal. There, but in that particular case, that violence was important because that violence is our sin. So it's always about committing to what this film needs to be. If you use every profanity in, in the book constantly, eventually you get numb to it. But you use it once, it'll hit you if you need it if it's necessary in the film. Like for example, if you watched It's a Wonderful Life, that film was very profound in its time and very hard to watch. And during Christmas, the most beautiful time of the year. And you don't want to drop an F-bomb in that movie, you know? But if you watch it, it's very powerful because this guy wants to end his life. It's over. He doesn't see what his value in his life, and this angel comes to him and shows him, George, don't you understand? If, the, if you weren't around, these people wouldn't, they would, they, they, they would never have made it without you. We have to look at our lives like that. One of the most profound scenes in that movie was when Jimmy Stewart, the Capra had that camera on him. He says, God, if you're out there, please help me. And those were real tears. That man flew 26 missions in a liberator over Germany, World War II. And you understand that when you're flying over in that tight formation, and one of those planes goes out, everybody has to remain quiet on their comms. 
Stuart lived with PTSD his entire life, and especially in that scene. And I'm sure that that, that trauma played out there, but God used it in the most beautiful way, just as some of the trauma that I grew up with, God used it in the most profound way in films like Sound of Freedom or The Passion of the Christ. When you got word about the project Passion of the Christ, <clears throat> it almost sounds like, well, how did you get word about that film? Crazy. Um, I mean, if you... Um, so I um, get a call that um, I knew Mel Gibson was, but I did not know it was Steve McAvity. And that was his key producer, main, main guy. That guy did Braveheart, which was the previous film Mel had directed 15 years earlier. And um, so they invited me to do a film uh, about what it was, uh, I think it was Tom Hanks and Mel Gibson were going to do this together. It was on Mavericks. It was the big surfing wave. And the director they wanted to direct it was Kevin Reynolds, who just directed me in The Count of Monte Cristo. So I went to meet them. And I meet, and Mel wasn't even supposed to show up, but he did about 40 minutes in. And uh, we were talking about the movie. I didn't think the script was there yet. And that was going to be a hard film to shoot because I'm not a surfer, but I was a basketball player. So I thought maybe, you know, anyway, but this, the, the, the material wasn't there. And I was talking to him about the material. And then all of a sudden, Mel pivot to something. And then I went back to when I was a young man in the theater. And I said, oh my God, this is why he called me to become an actor. And I said, you want me to play Jesus, don't you? And he looked at me, he was smoking a cigarette. And he just, <sighs> yeah, put his head down. <laughs> and he was really scared. And I said, okay. I just, what? What? Like, how can you, what? Okay. So I had all that preparation. What was the fear, do you think? Well, two days later, he called me at my house and I was taking the garbage out and I heard, um, I picked up the phone and I said, yeah, I was busy. And he goes, hey, Jim, it's Mel. And I said, Mel who? And he goes, I don't know, Mel Brooks. <sighs> hey, he was smoking a cigarette. And he goes, do you still want to play this Jesus guy? If you do, you may never work in this town again. And I was like, sca it scared me. I just, I was telling you, I just bought a Lamborghini. <laughs> and I was, oh, I'm gonna have to give all this stuff back. <laughs> And I was scared for a moment, and then this peace came over me. And I, it, I could feel it. it was from heaven. And I said, look, man, we're all called to carry our cross. If you don't pick up and carry your cross, you will be crushed by the weight of it. And then he got really quiet on the phone. And then I said, oh, my God. He said, what? I said, I just realized my initials are JC, and I'm 33 years old. And he goes, God, you're freaking me out. And he hung up the phone. And then McAvity came probably five days later. And then, and then, you know, uh, how was it? Did Mel have fear too, to ask? Sure he was. What do you think his fear was? None of us are good enough to do it. None of us are, it's, because of who we are, our past, everything, what we're talking about. Um, but the shame. Uh, but I, you know, I told my friend um, about that. His name is Yvonne. And I said, um, he said, you know, Jim, God doesn't always choose the best, but he chose you. What are you going to do about it? Hey, everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.